Hello, in this video we are going to discuss the meaning and the scope of the administrative law. We know that the constitution is the most basic or fundamental law of the land or the enactments have to go through the litmus test of the constitution. But still we are, we are, are always come across the words like rules, regulations, circulars, notifications, orders and we have to follow some of them like the laws. We know that the main function of legislature is to make the law. We fo follow the law made by the legislation. But still we have to follow these rules, regulations, orders, circulars like the law. And what is the reason behind it? The reason is given in the administrative law. So let us see the meaning of the administrative law. For that purpose we will start from the three pillars of the modern democratic state. First pillar is the legislature, then second one is executive and third one is the judiciary. Legislature makes the laws, executive executes the laws. That means they carry out the actual governance in accordance with the laws. The third pillar is the judiciary. The main function is to decide disputes. But along with it, they have to review the actions of the executives, whether they are undertaken as per the law or not. They have to take decisions in case of the allegations. Let us concentrate on the executives now. The executives include all the governmental departments, then independent agencies such as tribunals, commissions and regulatory bodies. The main three functions associated with the executives are to execute the day-by-day -day functioning of the various regulatory, monitoring or service responsibilities entrusted to them. Then executives have to make rules in the certain matters as per the power delegated by them, uh, delegated to them by legislature. Then executives have to adjudicate the disputes to the extent for allowed by, uh, to the extent allowed them by the law. All the three governmental departments are um, are indulged in all these three all these three functions. But if we see tribunals, they have to adjudicate the dispute to the extent allowed by law. That means the third function is associated with the tribunals. Then the district magistrate have to uh, perform second function that is they have to make rules in certain matters uh, as, as per the power delegated them by legislature. Then the scope of the administrative law is given in the, the, in the definition uh, by I.P. Messe in his book Administrative Law. Uh, let us see that definition. It is, uh, it, uh, it is observed by I.P. Messe that administrative law is a branch of public law which deals with the organization pow and powers of the administrative and quasi-administrative agencies and prescribes principles and rules by which an official action is reached and reviewed in relation to individual liberty and freedom. The key words in this definition are public law then for organization and powers, administrative, quasi-administrative agencies, then uh, reached and reviewed. Then uh, let us see the sec uh, second definition of the administrative law. It is also comprehensive definition. It is given by the Indian Institution of Law. According to it, administrative law deals with the structure, power and functions of the organs of administration the method and the procedure followed by them in exercising their powers and functions, the method by which they are controlled and remedies which are available to a person against them when his rights are infringed by their operation. The keywords are here structure, power, functions, then uh, the method, procedure, then controlled and the remedies. These are the key words in this definition. Now let us sum up uh, these two definitions. Uh, if we if we observe this definition, these two definitions carefully, then we may come across the problems associated with the administrative law. Uh, the first problem is which are the administrative authorities. The second one is the uh, which are the powers have to be exercised by the administrative authorities. Third one is the limitations imposed on these powers then procedure followed by the administrative authorities and then last one is which are the remedies available to a person uh, who is adversely affected by the, the, the action of the administrative authorities. 
these problems associated are nothing but the scope uh, are nothing but the scope of the administrative law so let us discuss the scope of the administrative law uh, first we may say it is the public law uh, this uh, I, the ip messe in his definition has said that administrative law is the public law public law means it is uh, uh, it is not like the private law private law is a uh, uh, private law consist of the relationship between the two persons or the two parties uh, we can take the example of the contract law or the property law then next it is not the law in the lawyer sense it uh, it has also the same meaning that means it is uh, it is not like the regular law indian penal code or property law or the contract law then the third scope we can say that administrative law deals with the creation then the uh, creation of the administrative and the quasi administrative agencies then the, the procedures to be followed by them and which are the powers uh, given to the administrative and the quasi administrative agencies we have seen administrative authorities mostly include the executives and the quasi administrative ad agencies means when the administrative authorities they uh, Uh, this their function is slightly differ from the pure administrative function then it is called as a quasi administrative agencies uh, then next one is the uh, administrative law includes the study of existing and upcoming principles such as natural justice reasonableness fairness etc here we can take the example of departmental inquiry uh, the criminal procedure code or uh, civil procedure code or uh, evidence act this procedural laws cannot be applied to the departmental inquiry there is application of the rule of natural justice that means no one should be uh, judged in hi in his own case then uh, no one should be condemned unheard or the rules of the fair hearing all these uh, rules of the natural justice have to be followed in the departmental inquiry and this uh, all these existing principles and also judge made principles all all of these principles are included in the uh, scope of the administrative law then the last one is the administrative law includes the control mechanism and there are different types of the control mechanisms on the administrative authorities first one is judicial control by taking the help of the constitution of india uh, there is a, a judicial control and also uh, there is emergence of the pil that, that means public interest litigation this is also one of the control mechanism on the administrative authorities then legislative control executive control executive controls means the uh, the control me con control by the superior authorities then procedural control and the social control media and the right to information act uh, we can take the example of this thus we may conclude with the scope of the administrative law as the administrative law deals with the structure functions and powers of the administrative organs it also lays down the methods and the procedures which are to be followed by them during the course of remedies which are available to the person whose rights and other privileges are damaged by the operations of the administrative authorities